Welcome to the Vision Driven Basketball Training Podcast. I appreciate every single one of you guys for tuning in today. Whether you're an Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, really appreciate that. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and drop a like. And if you're new, make sure you're subscribed. I'm dropping podcasts every single week on Sunday, so be prepared for that. If you're on Apple, if you're an Apple Podcast, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page right now and go ahead and leave a review for me. Also, really appreciate that. Helps to have more people see it. And um, so without further ado, we'll hop right into it. Um, you know, again, really appreciate the uh, the feedback that, that I've been getting and the support so far. Just hit a thousand total downloads for uh, the podcast at this point. So uh, shout out to every single one of you guys who are listening. And for those of you who, who continue to listen week after week, uh, really do appreciate all you guys for doing that. And, um, you know, if you find this stuff helpful, go ahead and share it with a friend. Um, and, and, you know, we'll keep on going, but, you know, today we're going to switch it up and go with with a little bit of a different topic and, um, definitely a less popular topic, but I got a question about this, this past week. And honestly, I forget who asked me the question, uh, but it was, it was a, it was a phenomenal question because it was essentially, it's something that I think about and I'm very, very passionate about, but I don't necessarily, uh, talk to, or I don't necessarily, um, think about all the time because it's just not the the popular thing to talk about so um this came from oh this came from from e1 on youtube we'll have to comment on one of my videos um again i always talk about the best way to reach me is through dm because i'll see comments sometimes especially if a video just came out uh i'll be scrolling through the comments or whatever so i might see it then um but there's a better chance of me seeing it and remembering it as well if you go ahead and dm me um this is a great comment on youtube where uh he asked me, you know, would, uh, you know, I wanted to give you an idea of a video about, you know, books about mindset, biographies are my favorite books. And that's such a great question. It's such a great topic to talk about. And we're going to go through that today um, because I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to explain to you why you should be reading books. And if you aren't reading books, why you're missing out and why you're really selling yourself short as a hooper, as a person in general you are but especially there's a lot of correlations we're going to make to basketball and why you need to be reading books and there are specific books that I think every single basketball player should read so if you're listening to this that includes you you should be reading these books because they're going to to and I'm going to get into this even further but uh books are so powerful because you know they allow us to really um to gain an, an incredible amount of knowledge in you know without really having to do much for ourselves you know a lot of times we rely so heavily on experiences but we're able to make you know we're able to to avoid some bad experiences and make other experiences better because of the knowledge we gain from those books that i'm going to share with you guys today so um we're going to hop right into it but you know kind of to start off i wanted to explain to you you know why this is such a a and kind of an unpopular topic, right? No one really ever asked me about that. I get a few about it, but I think it's so important. And really what it comes down to is, you know, it's easy to watch YouTube videos. Like it's easy to sit there and, and watch me talk about something or watch one of my workout videos or watch one of my film breakdowns or watch anybody on YouTube. It's it's very easy to do that. It doesn't take any sort of effort from you. You just kind of sit there and you, you watch, right? And it's easy to watch Netflix, You know, you put on a show that you like, it's easy to just kind of binge on that and watch it for, you know, eight, 10 hours straight. You don't really have to put in any sort of effort. It takes very little focus or concentration. You just kind of got to exist, right? It's easy. You know, it's easy to to play PlayStation or Xbox all day. It's all you got to do is just sit there and do it, right? There's not too much that goes into it. You know, obviously you might have to strategize a little bit with game or whatever, but it's still easier than going out and doing anything in real life. Right? It's a lot easier to go play 2K than it is to actually go and make it to the NBA in real life, obviously. So everyone opts to play 2K, right? So that's that's my that's my point though, is it's a lot easier to listen to to somebody break things down in short videos for you as it is to sitting down and actually reading a book, which might take you a few hours or even a few days. Um, it, it's just the the uh, the quick reward is something that is a plague in in the modern world that we live in today um and and, you know because of the easy access to those things it's very easy all of you guys are all of you guys have youtube you probably all found it through youtube okay all of you guys or most of you guys probably have netflix or hulu or some sort of streaming service um 
even though you don't really need those these days. I mean, you can find basically anything online. Um, and most of you guys probably have some sort of PlayStation, Xbox. Those things are so easy for you to use and they're so easy to access. Everybody has them now that our brains have have become accustomed to that. They've, be, they've become accustomed to to easy, you know, not having to put out a lot of effort and still getting a reward for it. Right. That's what happens when you watch, you know, you, when you binge on YouTube videos, you binge on Netflix videos, your brain doesn't have to put in very much work and it still gets that 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 dopamine reward. And I won't get too much into the science here, but essentially it all comes down to it's a dopamine is, is the chemical that's released when, you know, you watch a YouTube video or you watch a, a show on Netflix or you play Xbox or whatever. That's the reward chemical in your brain that makes you feel good about yourself. Right. And it's very easy to get those kind of quick hits from those 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 uh superficial means through youtube and and netflix and all the stuff that i'm talking about so our brain now because we've gotten that it's you know we've gotten a little taste of it now it pushes us to do that as much as possible okay so we don't need to have a long attention span all we got to do is be able to sit through a four minute youtube video right we don't have to you know have a, a long attention span all we have to do is scroll on instagram for 30 seconds that's all it takes for our brain. And because of how easy it is, that's what we gravitate towards. Because here's the thing with our, with your brain. It doesn't necessarily care about doing what's best for you. It really cares about how, how you feel, right? How it can make itself feel. It doesn't really care about long-term, what's the best thing I should do. Your brain doesn't think like that, okay? It's, it's, it's here for your survival, right? So it's going to take that easy route, um, especially if there's not a lot of work involved with it, okay? So... Reading, on the other hand, though, takes more effort, it takes more focus, more concentration, and it also takes longer, okay? But the difference there is that the rewards that you get from reading a book are much greater and, and, and much longer lasting than what you get from watching a YouTube video or, or playing Xbox, okay? The rewards you get from reading a book are far more significant than you would get from a quick Netflix uh, show or or you know whatever scrolling through Instagram, um, and, and there that's for a bunch of different reasons. But we'll hop into a, a couple of them. First of all, reading is shown to increase intelligence, and especially in uh, in younger people, right? So that's why you know it's such a big deal for for especially younger kids to be reading at an early age because the earlier you start reading, the more you do it younger, that actually uh, there's a correlation between how much you read as a younger person and how intelligent you are later in life. There's a direct correlation between those two things. Um, and, you know, so because of that, the younger you are, the more in, the more crucial it is that you're reading books. It's so important, okay? A lot of people think these days that, you know, you can get all the information you need from YouTube and from whatever right but that that maybe the information itself is probably all out there but in terms of the way you digest it and the way you process it you you, you don't you don't uh you don't retain the same amount of information through youtube videos that you would through a book okay because again you go through so many youtube videos so many different things that are just crowding your mind when you once you slow it down though and you actually have to go through and read a book yourself all of a sudden it becomes very very different okay Reading also improves your analytical problem-solving abilities, and, and that both increases your ability to analytically solve problems and also the efficiency which you do it at. And this is important because as a basketball player, I've talked about it before, but basketball is all about your ability to solve problems repeatedly. Every time down the floor, you want to make a move, your defender does this, how do you beat him? Your defender does that, how do you beat him? Your teammate cuts there, what's your, what's your read? right? You have a bunch of problems, a bunch of questions you have to figure out on the fly. And that's just repeatedly through and through and throughout the game. Um, that, that's, that's what basketball is right there. It's repeated problems you need to solve. And the better you are solving problems and the quicker you are solving problems, the better you're going to be in games. Okay. So improving your, your ability to do that through, through reading is another benefit that won't just help you as a person, but it's also going to help you basketball wise as well. OK, and that's something that you don't get. You don't get that from from doing any of these other sort of, you know, easy activities that we talked about. Reading is a major key to increasing your focus and your concentration. And I know firsthand for myself, for other for, for 
you guys who have who sent me DMs, left comments about this specific problem, focus and concentration throughout workouts and specifically through long periods of time, that is something that is very difficult these days. Very difficult. For me, I find it difficult. And for you guys as well, people say, hey, coach, how do I stay focused throughout my whole workout? How do I, how do I, how am I able to maintain a high level of concentration throughout my workout? And that a lot of times comes down to the fact that we are so easily stimulated through Instagram, scrolling through Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, you know, YouTube, all these quick things where we're, you know, it'd be interesting. Just think about it. Next time you're on your phone, how quickly are you switching between apps, switching between texts, switching between all these different things, kind of mindlessly doing it. And you might go 10 minutes and you probably don't even remember what you did in that 10 minutes. You're just switching through apps and all these different things, multitasking. And that's how these companies have, have built their products. That's how, that's how the iPhone designs their, that's how they design their new iOS is so that it makes multitasking very, very easy. So you're going to be on your phone for longer amounts of time. Okay. Instagram has made it so that you want to come back, come back, scroll, scroll, send a DM, do all these things. Snapchat is the same exact way. Note that you get that notification, that yellow notification on your, on your phone. And you feel like you have to answer it. Right, so you might be in the middle of doing something, but oh, you got a Snapchat, you got to go answer it. Oh, now you got a DM, you got to go answer that. Oh, then you got a text message, you got to answer that. So you're going back and forth. You don't, you don't have the ability to focus or concentrate on one thing for any sort of extended amount of time, and that is a that is a an absolute pandemic in around the world. Okay, we obviously are going through an like you know a, a legit pandemic, but I'm talking about social media and our ability to to our inability to focus or concentrate on anything. The 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 human attention span these days is probably lower than it's ever been in in the history of humanity, right? Because we have so many things available to us, we can't pick one. Okay, so we don't have the ability to to effectively focus on one thing for a long amount of time and that can translate to your workouts. Right, which is obviously what we don't want. That can translate to when you're watching film. Okay, that can translate to when you want to read a book about something. Things that are going to help you long term, that are going to push you towards your goals. It's harder for you to do, right? Because you're so you know you can't seem to stay focused on that for any sort of amount of time. And and if you if you've never thought about that before, I encourage you next time you're scrolling through your phone, think about that for yourself. Do you do you have a a, is it difficult for you to stay on one thing, to focus on one thing for any sort of, you know, a, a few minutes at a time, right? It's probably difficult for you. It's probably difficult for most of you. That's how, that's how this world has become, um, you know, especially here in America where that's really, that's celebrated. Okay. So understand that that's not just you. That's really the society that we live in at this point, but there are things you can do that are going to help to to counteract that. Okay, I'm not saying that social media is a bad thing or YouTube is a bad thing, but I'm saying it needs to there needs to be a balance in your life because if you if you're sucked into those things enough so that you can't even focus on anything for you know you can't get off your phone and focus on your workout or focus on watching film or focus on reading a book for any sort of long amount of time, then something's got to change. Okay, you've got to make some sort of adjustment so that you're able to do these things that you know are good for you and you know are going to help you, but are just really difficult for you to do. Okay, we're going to talk about how you're going to be able to do that. But reading is really the key to counteracting that because when you read, you're, you're, all that you can do is focus on what's being said to you. Okay, there is no there is no swiping to get to another app. There is no notifications in the book that you're reading, right? And I, I know you know just. To clarify real quick, obviously there's the Kindle app, um, which you can you can read books on your phone too. But the 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 point I'm trying to make is that when you're reading, that's your focus right there. Okay, that's what you're focused on, and the the reading is a, is a way you can actively combat the uh, multitasking you know epidemic that we're facing. And even if it's just for 15 to 20 minutes a day, where you're like, you know what? Right now, for this next 15 minutes, I'm going to read and I'm not going to do anything else. If that's what you decide to do, you can do that consistently, you're going to start building up your ability to focus and concentrate. And all of a sudden, it's going to be easier for you to be able to go through your workouts and stay focused, go through your film watching and stay focused. Do those things that you know you need to do. It's going to be a lot easier for you when you start to add that that habit of reading into what you're doing. Okay? So, all of those things 
translate well to improving your life and obviously improving yourself as a basketball player. Okay, and that's why you know, regardless of anything else, reading is something that every person on earth should do every single day, and not only for those reasons, but it can absolutely have an effect on you as a basketball player and can directly impact your performance and your development as a player. 100% it can. And, you know, we've all seen the pictures of LeBron and Kobe who, you know, they're reading books, right? And it's not a coincidence that those guys get caught reading a lot. I mean, you can look up LeBron reading and you'll find him reading all sorts of different things. He'll be reading The Godfather um, the Hunger Games. He'll be like he'll be walking into the locker room. Most guys are, are you know cruising the locker room on their hoverboard with their AirPods in or their Beats on, listening to music. LeBron's walking in to Eastern Conference Finals reading The Godfather, right? That should that should let you know something, right? You we all know about LeBron's Zero Dark. Uh, what was it uh, Zero Dark? Uh, Zero Dark Thirty, I think, or Dark Forty. I forget what the number is, but for when every year in the playoffs, he goes dark, basically, right? Where he's off social media and he's just focused on what he's doing. And he always talks about how he he, he watches through the, the Godfather movies during that time for the playoffs every year. And he's reading through the books because that inspires him, right? And that's why he's able to walk in and be focused. And that's why we see playoff LeBron, right? Because his focus, his concentration without those distractions is on a whole new level, okay? And that stems from the reading. Kobe Bryant, the same exact way. Okay. And we're going to get into Kobe Bryant's reading list soon because Kobe Bryant was one of those guys who was just a, a, a um, just so different when it came to mentally, you know, it's just so different. You know, it's a guy that will never see anybody like him because of just the way he approached the game. Right. And there's so many things we can take from him that, that can, can apply to us. And this is one thing right here, his ability to focus and, and concentrate. Also understand about Kobe Bryant avid reader okay so i want you guys to start to see the 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 correlation between those two things okay and you know the the that kind of goes along with my next point the most successful people in all areas of life are the ones who read okay and and reading essentially allows you to take the thoughts and ideas and experiences and stories from another person and download them into your own brain Okay, and some of these ideas or stories might have taken that other person years or maybe even their entire lives to experience, to write down, to publish into a book. And you're able to get that within a few hours or a few days. Okay, that's powerful right there when you think about it that way. Okay, so, so a lot of people think reading is boring, but you're literally taking a piece of somebody else's life and, and, and putting that into your own mind expanding the way that you think about something that's the power of reading and to add to that there are books that you can read that will directly impact your iq and your encore performance okay and and specifically we're going to get into a couple books right here that do that that have done that for me for, for for a lot of players that uh that i've worked with for all my guys who are part of the perimeter score system you know we have the the mental toughest master class and the 20 points to get blueprint where at the end i i share books that players need to read okay and actually i believe i shared four in that with, with those with those uh with those guys in there um today i'm gonna share two with you guys i'm gonna go through kobe Bryant's reading list as well but those guys in the perimeter score system understand and i've really drilled in the importance of reading and the importance of continued development of yourself mentally okay and, and um the two books i'm gonna explain i'm gonna share with you guys today are books that you you need to read if you call yourself a serious basketball player, you need to read them, okay? Because if you if you if you hear what I'm going to tell you today, you still don't read those books. It's it's a question mark, okay? It's a red flag right there. These are these are books that are they are not optional. You need to do it, and specifically, these books are going to target the mental side of the game. So developing your mentality, your toughness, um, your ability to be a great teammate, how to approach your training, how to approach your games, all of these things are things that, that most players don't naturally know how to do correctly. Some do. Some might do all these things correctly. Pro- that's probably one in a thousand. Okay, And, and, and even, even still, there are things you can improve in those areas to become the most efficient in how you can improve and how you can perform on the court. 
Okay, and if you want that, if you want to to be more efficient in, in the way you improve and and the way that you can actually perform when when the lights turn on, and you're actually playing in the games. It's important for you to to uh, understand these things for yourself. So you need to learn it from somewhere. It's not just going to come out of thin air. Basketball, and you guys have heard me say this before. Basketball is not just about the physical part. It's not just about how good of a shooter are you, how good of a rebounder are you, how good of a ball handler are you. It's not. It's it's about more than that. There's way more that goes into it. We all know somebody who might be more, who might be one of the most talented players, but they don't, they don't, they get outperformed by people who aren't as good. Okay, and that's typically because of a, of a lack of maybe confidence, um, a lack of experience, a lack of mental toughness a lot of the times. And these are things that you can gain from reading these books. Okay, so just like in your training, you want to learn the correct way to do things. You don't want to drill in the wrong way to do things. You want to figure out what works, what's worked for other people, and how can I take that and how can I apply it to myself? Okay, you cannot you cannot understate the importance of those things. So, you know, I kind of want to to go through these books real quick for you. The first book that you need to read in this book right here is maybe my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time. As, as in terms of, and, and, you know, I have a few books that are non-basketball related that that I'll probably share with you guys at some point. But basketball related, this is my favorite book ever, and honestly, one of probably one of the best books for basketball players ever written. Okay, and, and again, it is a must-read, and it's called Toughness by Jay Billis. And for those of you who don't know, Jay Billis was he, he currently is a uh, he's he works for ESPN as a uh, as a commentator for college basketball. And he played for uh, he played for Duke. He was a member of of the winningest uh, Duke team ever throughout his four years there. Um, he was you know he he was really instrumental in kind of building up the Duke program with Coach K in, in kind of his his earlier years. And uh, so he has a very unique perspective on the game. And the book Toughness really goes into what it takes to be mentally tough on the floor. And it really breaks down with his teammates, with himself, his experiences, and what he's seen. What separates players who who are tough, who are good teammates, who are successful consistently, and who and you know the ones who aren't. And also, it has great insight into different coaches. So obviously, he played for Coach K, one of the greatest coaches ever. So we're able to kind of peek inside and see how does Coach K prepare for things, how does Coach K approach games. Um, and, and specifically, there's a story in that book where, you know, Jay Billis was 18 years old. He was a freshman at Duke. So, you know, he had just gotten there. Obviously, in high school, he was one of the, he was a very heralded player in California. Um, so, you know, he comes into Duke with a, a great class. You know, his freshman class was um, very, very loaded. And, uh, you know, he had to to kind of get adjusted to that. So their first uh, you know, not dur- during their the early part of the season, back you know obviously during during college basketball season, we all know that these big Power Five teams are going to schedule you know these kind of mid major schools kind of tune up and get ready for their conference schedule. So that was kind of where they were at. You know, they were uh, they were playing a team that was that was significantly worse than them. Didn't have any of the big time recruits. Um, was just kind of a lowly mid major team, and uh, so you know. Jay Billis is, is going into that thinking like, you know, what I played a lot of big games in high school. Like I've seen, you know, do play big games before. Like I know what a big game is like. I'm cool. Right. So so before that game, though, where they're playing that team, Coach K comes in the locker room to, you know, to, to, to go over the scouting report, essentially, for for that game. Um, and, you know, they were playing. It, it was a team that Duke should beat. OK, it was it was a, it was a game that Duke could probably play like 60 percent and still win the game. Okay, so it wasn't a game that the media was really going to cover that much. Probably wouldn't be on, you know, primetime ESPN that night. Um, And it wasn't really a game that, as a player, you get excited about. I'm sure you've all played in games where, like, you go into the game knowing the team you're playing is not very good and you already know you're going to win the game. It was one of those sort of games. And Coach K comes in the locker room and he says, this is the most important game on our schedule. And Jay Billis is, is... is kind of, you know, he's kind of, uh, you know, shaking his head, wondering like, well, coach, you know, we play Virginia, who's ranked number one. 
We play the defending champs, North Carolina. And then we have Louisville, who, who played in the Final Four last year. And how is, like, how is this game our most important game on the schedule? And Coach K re- responds to him and says, it's the, most game, it's the most important game on our schedule because we're playing it right now. And everything that we do is important. Every single step along the way is important. And essentially what Coach K stressed to them is that in order to, if you want to play for championships and sub in championships for anything else, you want to play to, to, to win awards. You want to play to, um, you know, get a, get a spot on the team. You want to play to make it to the next level, right? Every single step, every single game, every single workout needs to be approached as if it's the most important thing that you're ever going to do. Okay, because if you pick and choose when to bring the effort, you won't consistently make that improvement. Okay, and, and you won't be able to be your best consistently because that's what it's all about is about proving that you're the best every single time you step onto the floor. And if, if, you, if you want to compete for a championship, you can't give less than championship effort ever, right? You, you, you can't do it. You have to bring championship level effort Every single practice, every single game, regardless of what's happening, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of who you're playing, your opponent can't determine your standard of excellence that you hold yourself to. If you allow that to be the case, if you allow yourself to say, you know what, I don't have to be excellent today because we were playing with someone who's terrible. I can, I can, be, I can be average today. That all of a sudden becomes a slippery slope to where there's going to be times where you're going to fall back into habits, right? When, when the game is tough and... It all comes down to one possession for the championship. Have your habits put you in a place to where you're ready, you're prepared to do that. If you consistently are are a person who is focused on doing the right things, holding yourself to that that standard of excellence, then you'll be prepared for it. If you allow yourself to to be lazy with that and pick and choose when you're going to try, you're not going to be prepared for it, especially if that other team has been approaching things at the championship level mentality every single game okay if we and this is what coach k said if we meet our standard of excellence every single night winning is going to take care of itself okay it's not about going out there and trying to win it's about going out there and trying to hold ourselves to the standard of excellence in how we execute our stuff how we prepare for games okay and it's it's that that's what coach k what what his message was to his guys that every single game is the most important game we're ever going to play because we need to hold ourselves to that standard of excellence because that's how we're going to win right we can't just turn it on we can't pick and choose when we're going to do that because eventually we're going to find a team who doesn't do that and at that point it's going to be a wrap for us okay so there's a lot of stories like that where you're going to learn these lessons from these just elite basketball minds throughout this book and, and how it's really it's broken down to is it's, it's broken down in different chapters that break down different um, different aspects of being tough as a basketball player okay the there's a chapter on trust and, and being a person who's worthy of trust from your teammates and coaches who can trust the work that you've put in okay how do you actually get to that point um, the the story I just told you about coach K comes from the story on or the chapter on preparation where he talks about how do you prepare for your games? How do you prepare for your practices? How do you put yourself in the best position to win? How do you develop that standard of excellence you hold yourself to? Okay, and there's uh, there's, a, there's a chapter on courage. So being able to take that last shot, right? Not being afraid to fail, not being afraid to look bad when you're practicing or or whatever it might be, which is just such a major key for a lot of players. One of my favorite chapters is called next play where essentially it, it, it explains to you the importance of moving on to the next play you know once a play happens once something you know you miss a shot there's nothing you can do to take that shot back all that you control at that point is your effort moving forward okay that's the only thing that you have control over he also talks about commitment and the, the keys to actually being a player who who is committed because a lot of people will say hey, yeah, I'm committed I do all these things but what does it mean to actually be a committed player? And and specifically, you can tell there there's just there's players who are different, right? There are guys who 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 bring a different level of effort and intensity 
to the games, to practices. Guys who might not be as talented, as athletic as other people, yet they're still able to dominate, right? How are they able to do this? A lot of times it comes down to to, to the commitment, not just committing to, to doing your workouts, all these things, but your actual commitment when you get to the gym, right? When you're in practices, in games, and, and he really breaks all this stuff down. Um, a lot of interviews with other great coaches, Tom Izzo, um, Tom Crean, a, a lot of a lot of guys who are fantastic basketball minds and, and other sports too, where you're gonna learn from some of the best uh, the best minds in sports, right? So so it's a book where you know I read it constantly. I read it at least once a year um, since I was in high school. I've been reading that book, and it's something that every player needs to read. Okay, so after this podcast is done, I want you guys to go get that book. Go find it somewhere and check it out. Go, you know, I don't know if the libraries are open where you guys are at. Probably not. If it is, though, my library has it. That's where I got it the first time. I, I bought it now. Um, but first time I read it, I got it from the library. So go check that out. And um, so that that's important. And that that's book number one. Book number two is uh, another book that's very, very important. I think every player needs to read this book. And it's called Relentless by Tim Grover. And a little background on Tim Grover. Tim Grover is the he, he was the trainer for Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and, and some other guys as well. But those are really the three main guys, the three biggest guys that he was the trainer for. And um, basically, the book is all about what's called a cleaner. Okay, And a cleaner it would be all three of those guys are cleaners. Essentially, a, a cleaner is, is the highest level you can be when it comes to how you approach things. Okay, the, the attention to detail you pay to things, uh, the intensity you bring to what you do. And it, it really explains why Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, why are these guys are so different from everybody else. Okay, and specifically, I want to break this down for you guys because this is a part of the book that uh, he kind of starts off with to kind of give you guys a good, a better, a better thought of what I'm talking about. There's three different levels of players, right? There, there's a cooler. That's level one. There's a closer, level two, and then there's a cleaner, which is which is level three, okay? And this is how he breaks it down, you know? He says, a cleaner is rarely understood, and he likes it that way. Here's what I'm talking about. Coolers can have an amazing game. Closers can have an amazing season. Cleaners have amazing careers. Coolers worry about the competition and how they measure up. Closers study the competition and plan their attack based on the opponent. Cleaners make the competition study them. They don't care who they're facing. They know they can handle anyone. Coolers avoid taking the winning shot. Closers take the shot if they know they have a good chance of making it. Cleaners just trust their gut and shoot. They don't have to think about it. Coolers won't offer to take on a role they're not comfortable with. Closers will take their role if you ask them and will do it well if they have enough time to prepare for and study the situation. Cleaners don't wait to be asked. They just do it. Coolers let others decide whether they're successful. They do the job and wait to see if you approve. Closers feel successful when they get the job done. Cleaners never feel as if they've achieved success because there's always more to do. Coolers don't want to carry the team, but they're the first to slap you on the back when you do a good job. Closers want the credit for getting the job done and love being congratulated for what they did. Cleaners rarely congratulate you for doing your job. They just expect you to do it. Coolers think they want the spotlight, but when they get it, they usually handle it badly. Closers stand in front, closers stand in front because they, sh- they want to show who's in charge. Cleaners don't have to show who's in charge. Everybody already knows. Coolers will eat whatever you feed them. Closers will, or- closers will order what they want and be satisfied with a great meal. It doesn't matter what, what a cleaner eats, he'll still be hungry again in an hour. The closer can win the game if given the opportunity but the cleaner creates the opportunity. The closer can be the star, but the cleaner maneuvered him into the job. Cleaners never need to be pushed. Everybody else does. And it ends with good, great, unstoppable. So there's three levels of players, and it explains how to actually embody the mindset of a cleaner. Okay, And as you can see, the difference between a cooler, someone who's not consistent, a closer, somebody who's fairly consistent, and... A, a cleaner, someone who, who's, who's clockwork when it comes to consistency, is a big difference from each level. And he breaks down not just those three between MJ, Kobe, Dwayne Wade, 
but other guys who who are elite at what they do, LeBron, uh, Tiger Woods, these guys who have achieved immense levels of success consistently over a long period of time, and what that actually takes. Okay, so you know you can you can listen through those 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 comparisons I gave you and think about which where would I put myself in that, right? And and that kind of gives you an idea of of where you're at right now. And and if you aspire to get to that cleaner level, I highly recommend you check out this book as well. These two books, really in general, need to be read if you're a basketball player. You know, I, toughness is a book I'm gonna read every year, forever, because it's not just basketball stuff. It is it's 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 in the sense like it, it's um it's written for basketball players, but it really translates to every area of your life. Okay, there's non basketball stories in there. I'm gonna continue to read it, and if you're a hooper, you need to read that book. Relentless as well, a book that you definitely need to, to read to understand, um, to have that sort of understanding of just the intensity that it takes to really be the best at something. Okay, so you guys want to develop your mentality and, and and learn more. Really, these books are so important for you, and you know that's kind of that's kind of my my thing with those with those books is that you again, like I said, that's stuff that a lot of players don't have naturally, right? You might think, like, okay, you know, I watch all these videos on how to, you know, get better at shooting and how to get better at ball handling. But how, 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 what kind of time do you spend developing your mindset, developing your mentality, right? Because if you spend this time training on your physical skills but not your mental, well, you're you're leaving a whole part of the game, and and you're just kind of ignoring that. So that's something that that you have to to take into account, and. Uh, I wanted to share with you guys real quick just the Kobe Bryant reading list because, like I said, Kobe has has a a list of books that uh, he, uh, he are some of his favorite books, and, and I kind of want to go through a few of these. Just so you have a few more ideas of, of stuff you can read. Um, the first one is called The Alchemist by uh, Paulo Coelho, which is a book I've read a couple times. Great book. Uh, LeBron James, another guy. You if you can find you can find pictures of LeBron reading this book, The Alchemist. Um, it's more like a story. So if you're into like more like a fiction sort of tale, um, I'm forgetting the 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 uh, an allegory. I think is technically what it would be, um, what it would be captioned under. Um, but really, it, it tells about like the journey of starting off with nothing, to going along your journey, getting through all these obstacles and acquiring everything you've ever wanted. Right. That's kind of the the premise of the book, um, and super important. Uh, that, that you guys check that out. Um, Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Children of Blood and Bone by uh, Tommy Adeyemi. The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. Relentless by Tim Grover, obviously. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Sunny by Jason Reynolds. Team of Rivals by Doris Kearns Goodwin. The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Tough Juice by Karan Butler. So... Like I said, one of the best, one of the best to ever do it, is is a guy who is really obsessed with with the mental side of the game, and that comes hand in hand with reading. So I really hope you guys take what I'm telling you and you run with it. Even again, if it's just for 20 minutes a day, you spend reading, that's gonna pay off for you guys long term. I promise you that. Okay, so I, I really hope you guys you guys follow that. Um, that's where we're gonna end today. You know, like I always say, questions for me. Go ahead and send me a DM on Instagram uh, at Vision Driven Basketball, and you know that again. That's where I got I get all of my basic my ideas for for podcasts is, is through either DMs or or YouTube comments. So um, and and regardless of that, follow me on Instagram even if, even if you don't have a question at Vision Driven Basketball and all that stuff is to be linked down below. And um, so you know I really like talking about kind of these these different topics. Obviously, this is not too much you know in terms of the actual basketball part of things but mentally that's such a crucial piece to it as well so i hope that you guys don't overlook this um take it get better and um i'll talk to you guys soon peace